Uh, Walter, would you tell us about your formal education and training? Well, I started after high school in the U.S. Navy as a U.S. Naval Reserve as a radar technician. Came back, uh, spent two years at MIT in undergraduate engineering, and then uh, switched out because I realized that MIT is a trade school, it's not a university. <laughs> I needed a decent education. So I went to the University of Chicago on recommendation of the dean at MIT who told me that's where all the other misfits go. I had uh, basically uh, uh, another two years uh, undergraduate education. I uh, switched my major to go to medical school. And at that point, I didn't have enough credits in any one field to get a degree. So I went to medical school without one. And uh, four years later, graduated from uh, Yale University with honors and took a year of internship at Johns Hopkins Hospital. What year was that? 1954-5. You just answered my next question. What was your first job in engineering or science? So your internship at John Hopkins would have been. Technically uh, speaking, it's unpaid. That is to say, we worked uh, solely for uh, food and board with no uh, no income. It's good job. So when was the first time you got somebody to pay you to do science? Well, after uh, my year of internship. I uh, applied for a uh, postdoctoral fellowship from the uh, National Institute of Health, the U.S. Public Health Service. And that really was my first, uh, let's say, income, other than from my father, who was very interested in, uh, in my uh, further in my medical education because uh, I was the I am the fourth generation in medicine, American medicine. So. Uh, uh, that then led, after three years of postdoctoral fellowship, uh, to my first uh, full-time job here at Berkeley in 1959, working now uh, as an assistant professor, working our way up the academic ladder. So that's the extent of my formal education. Uh, would you tell us a little bit about your formal education? Well, I was... Uh... Uh, born in the Soviet Union, Republic of Azerbaijan, in the city of Baku. So, my parents were not Soviet citizens, they were citizens of Iran. But anyway, so, my elementary education was in Baku. My mother language was Russian. And was that where you, they gave you that? Yes. So that was in Baku, they gave you that. What, what is that they called? It's big, it's called Friendship Now. Friendship Now. It's just a sort of a small version. That's lovely. Yes, and so my accent is Russian accent. So uh, anyway, so, uh, so at some point then, the situation in Soviet Union became difficult. My parents decided to return to Iran. And so, uh, when we uh, arrived in the Tehran, the capital, uh, they placed me in an American missionary school, Presbyterian Missionary School. It's called American College. How old were you when you came back? Ten years. Ten years old. I was ten years old at that time. And uh, so, I did not know English. I did not know Persian, so it was a little bit difficult. Well, I think you got the best of, uh, of three worlds, because you got that foundation in Russian rigorous thinking, yeah. uh, and then you got the, the Farsi charm, the Persian charm, and uh, please continue yes, on the yes. education. So. Yes. Uh, I want to add something, uh, because my, uh, the years that I spent with Soviet Union had a rather significant influence on uh, my life later on, at that time, the Soviet Union, uh, they worshipped science, technology, the scientists, they were the people really who uh, were uh, object of admiration. And that influenced me quite a bit. So that stuck with me for the rest of my life. 
And so I, at the age of six, I already decided I wanted to be an engineer, I wanted to be a member of the academic world, so that was an early decision for me. So in any case, so, uh, so I was placed in this American college uh, where we have the chapel every morning. And while well, I was in the Soviet Union, if, if you believe in God, then nobody will talk to you. So that was a rather sharp, <laughs> sharp contrast. And uh, so then I, uh, I spent a year or so living in college, and then uh, a new law was passed under which I had to complete six years of uh, Iranian school before going on to a foreign school. So I had to leave the Iranian college and transfer to Iranian school. Uh, altogether a different culture, the electrician would show up in the school, they had to wash all the bombs. So for me that was a very striking thing to move from a society in which uh, people believe unequivocally that something is right, something is wrong, to another world, the opposite, and then to still another culture. In any case, so I have completed my education there. It didn't take me long. It took me one year. I returned to American college. And then I uh, received my degree, which was essentially sort of a high school degree at that college. And then I, uh, I entered the University of Tehran, where the influence was French. Mm -hmm. All the textbooks were French. So, Russian, <laughs> and American, and then French. Don't leave out Persian. <laughs> and Persian too. Persian too, yes. So, four, four cultures. Yes, 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 sure. 